Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are Ada and Abigail, the creators of Dev and Think for Historians, a set of online classes that walk you through key Dev and Think features. And we, in that course, we share tips and tricks and scripts to help you save time while using Dev and Think, which is a very powerful database software for historical research. So uh, during this video, we're going to walk you through some cool templates that come prepackaged in Dev and Think when you get it. So Abigail, what, what are we going to work through today? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to talk about Cornell notes, and we're also going to talk about um, some source, uh, I'm going to call them source based um, spreadsheet templates. Yes. Um, so when I say sources, it's my shorthand for like primary and secondary sources. These are actually all secondary sources. Um, so uh, if that's a little cryptic, I promise <laughs> we'll, we'll be sorry. showing, uh, we'll be walking through everything. It will make a lot more sense. Yes. Um, so why don't we get started um, by first saying that all of these templates can be found um, within the education subfolder in the oh. templates. So that's kind of the organizing principle today is we're talking about education related <laughs> templates. Yes. Um, so the first is Cornell notes. So yes. some some people might be familiar with Cornell notes. It's a, um, a note taking and study strategy that's often taught at the high school and undergraduate level. Mm -hmm. And um, basically um, it's really a technique optimizing for optimized for um, studying and recall. Um, in Devon Thing for Historians, we do show and teach uh, another method for taking notes on sources, whether they are um, primary sources or secondary sure. sources. Um, that's more uh, related to building a body of knowledge. Um, and so more so about talking about how the thing that you're working with, your primary or secondary source relates to everything else in your database, what, whereas Cornell notes are, are really more for getting deep and specific into one particular source. This will make more sense when, when we, if you're, if you're not familiar with Cornell notes, when we show you the template, yes. this will become clear. Um, so I would say that Cornell notes are really a, a more helpful way of perhaps intellectually processing a, a challenging text. Mm -hmm. um, but we know we have viewers out there who are, are graduate students who may still be in coursework. And so perhaps um, for your own coursework, this um, note taking method will be useful for you. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's dive into it. OK, yes, let's let's. let's. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. We're going to look yeah. at um, Devin. OK, so. So let's go awesome. right away um, to, all right, let's, I'm going to just sort of cancel this out right now so you don't see anything because I'm going to go and show how to find where these uh, templates live. So you're going to go to either actions, which is this icon right here, or in the top menu, you can go to data. And when you click, the second item in the drop down is new from template. Yes. And then you um, scroll over and come down to education. And yes. you're going to see four, oops, four different styles of Cornell notes. So you have Cornell notes and Cornell notes education. And then you have markdown versions and text versions. So I'm now, I have, um, all four versions open already in my database. All you have to do to open one of these is just click down, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go. So when you open them, um, what you'll see is that the ones that are marked education have course in the uh, name of the file and the ones that are not marked education, so the first two are marked area of interest. Mm -hmm. So really what this is saying is that the um, education versions are for note taking in class versus these area of interest. Um, you might 
devote just to a topic or a specific reading um, that you're taking notes on. Yes. Um, what's the difference between the markdown and the rich text? Well, I think that um, the looking at them is a pretty good giveaway. Yeah. So if you open the rich text, you'll see that it is just an unformatted text file. Um, versus Markdown, you can see has uh, formatting to it yeah. um, that creates a really nice visual experience. For sure. So um, let's start um, by looking at how to work with this um, Markdown document. Sure. So you'll notice, did you hear that noise? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, okay. Maybe so um, I, the uh, Zoom um, background noise uh, interference is, is too good for this. If <laughs> I try to type right now, it gives you that k -k 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 Mac sound ah. that says uneditable. Yeah. So what you have to do is um, you see here at the top of the window showing the document mm -hmm. is uh, three icons. So we're currently in the preview view, yes. but we need to switch over to the source view. So when we switch over to the source view, we can see, ah, now I can edit. Yes. Um, so how the Cornell notes work is what you're supposed to do is um, whether you're listening to a lecture or you're reading, you're gonna take notes. So um, according to Garp, the meaning of life is <laughs> unknown. And now if we go back to the preview, we'll see that my essential question and my note are reflected in yes. the beautiful visual template. Um, what you would then go do is at the end of taking all your notes, kind of write guiding questions or keywords that help you um, synthesize the information in a way that allows you to basically cover up the right side of the page and just have a question or a keyword that you have to recall to find, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it is you're, you're trying to learn or remember. Um, so we have to go back and, and write this question. Right. So the cool thing you can do in Devon Think is the third icon gives you the side-by-side -side view. So I can come back here into the source and say, what is the meaning of life? And it is supposed to now show up in the preview. So maybe you have to toggle out or give it a second to update. Um, but so now you can see you have your um, question on the left, your notes on the right. Mm -hmm. You could print these out, fold it in half and use it to study or just have on hand uh, if you're trying to, again, um, leave yourself a record of your engagement with a challenging text that you were, you were synthesizing. So let's look at um, an example of um, the course version. So here's what a, an entire Cornell note filled out might look like. So we have um, a course that we're taking called Special Topics in Calamity Physics. Um, we have the student name that auto-populated <laughs> and the date yeah. auto-populated. Um, and the period also audio populated as the year 2022. And then I wrote in that this was week one of the class. Um, so I know because the professor wrote on the board um, that the theme of, or the today's lecture 
uh, is what is calamity physics, that this is the essential question that this lecture <laughs> is trying to, um, to tackle. So I listened to the whole lecture and I learned what calamity ma means. I learned what physics is and then what calamity physics really is. And at the end, I summarized, uh, you know, that uh, calamity physics focuses on calamities manifesting in the physical world. Um, cool. So one thing I did want to show is this is, at least for me on my screen, showing up very small. It's a little difficult yes, to read. remember that. that you can always use the trackpad um, and your expand motion <laughs> with your fingers <laughs> to enlarge it. So, ah, this is way easier much, to much more visible. For sure. So this, uh, this is perhaps of use to you. Um, yes. So you now know how to work with and engage with it. Um, I, one last thing I want to show is that if you're using the rich text versions, um, there are at the bottom, if you scroll, there are instructions for how to use it, um, both in the sense of how to use a Cornell note and how to um, manipulate the rich text. Right, right, right. One thing, so thank you for this. I think that it's super cool and a nifty template. I think that that's to everyone's disposal. One of the things that I think is pretty cool is the use of Markdown. So maybe not everyone yeah. uses Markdown. I don't know how often you do, um, Abigail, but it's a very fast way to create things that look really nice um, and not have to worry about all the styling when you're entering in the content. But then when you're finished entering the content, you have some beautiful a, a sort of a beautiful end product. So um, I'm not sure how many of you are interested in Markdown or use it, um, but it's a very cool, very, uh, very, yeah, very cool way to um, create documents. And you can use Markdown to create websites. It's popular in many, many ways, well beyond uh, Dev and Think, but it's a kind of a cool little skill. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I should say that Dev and Think offers a ton of support for Markdown. Um, it's, it's really, um, so many of its users yes. are Markdown aficionados, regularly want to implement Markdown um, okay. for their documents. And so even though um, I don't use it very often and maybe for the historian's use case, yeah. Markdown is not, um, you know, the most valuable uh, um offering of, of the software that regardless, <laughs> it is one of Devin Think's strengths. Yes, 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 yes. Many, many strengths of Devin Think. So Markdown is just one of them. One other thing I'd like to point out in when, when you were watch, showing everyone how to get here and you went to the actions menu, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, I did want in the new from template, I didn't want to just bring everyone's attention to there's a lot here. We, yeah. we, we're focusing on education, um, but there's a lot of options, including, you know, the super annotations that you could get if you um, have purchased our course. Um, and if you, those of you that already purchased, you hopefully have your super annotations there and use from template. But I did want to point out to everyone that, you know, we're here talking about the education uh, folder today, but there's lots. Um, and if you're not familiar, you can poke around in those other folders. Yeah, we do show folks um, how to use some of them in the super user course, yes. the Devon Think for Historians super user course. Um, I would just say in particular, um, I love the phone note um, template because I do a lot of phone calls in my business. And so I just find it to be particularly useful. Um, yeah. You know, insofar as these many things go. Okay. Um, awesome. Should we look at- so on to the um, next topic. Yeah. So the next um, set I want to look at is these source spreadsheets. Yeah. Uh, so um, there's articles, booklets, books, manuals, proceedings, technical reports, theses. So for most um, humanists and social scientists, technical reports, probably 
is not, it's not going to be the one you look at very often. (laughs) Booklets, maybe not. Um, I also want to point out that there is a references um, spreadsheet up here, which actually I think should be filed down here because it's exactly the same as articles, except it has a DOI column, um, which uh, I think makes it really optimal for STEM fields. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I know that there are, um, for example, like sociologists out there who often work with um, like medical sociologists, for example, who may be writing grants or um, proposals or articles that do use a lot of um, journal articles, right. like use primarily journal articles and whose um, form um, citation format often includes so DOI. Yes. So perhaps that's better for you. Right. Um, we also just wanted to quickly note that um, in our super user course, yes. we do teach how to use this template um, to import um, a citation, citation from the program, yes. um, but we won't be talking about it today. Right. So Let's get into what we are going to talk about today. Yeah. So why did we think it was particularly worth talking about these? Um, we actually came up with a bunch of different possible uses for them. So if you want to create a list of um, the books you have in your office and one of the books you have at home, because <laughs> I never remember <laughs> whether uh, your copy of Crabgrass Frontier is in the office <laughs> or somewhere in the house, um, you can always create topical lists of sources, all of the articles related to um, history of um cancer care, all of the books on suburbanization. You could also create library lists, a list of the books you have checked out, (laughs) and maybe when they need to go back. Yeah, (laughs) Um, maybe. Yeah, and then maybe just a list of books you want to check out next time you're on campus. Um, For the theses in particular, if you're a senior scholar, you have graduate advisees, maybe you want to keep a list for your brag file or your CV of all of the theses and their, um, you know, um, publication dates. Um, And uh, the last, you know, pretty obvious example I came up with is if you are just trying to keep a list of references for a very specific um, grant proposal or project proposal that you're writing, this could be a great way to do it. Yeah. Um, this is different than a reference manager. Um, yeah, this is yes. really about creating a list for you. Um, it is There is not much that you can do with this list in terms of citation, working with Microsoft Word, or um, even trying to um, use, you know what, I'm making it too complicated. Let's go in and look at them. And then I'll talk about why the their sort of use is a little limited. Yeah. So let's look. But they um, are very flexible, which will show everyone. And so you listed a whole yeah. bunch of fabulous examples that, you know, came to mind when looking at them, but they are super flexible. And, and I know that you're going to show everyone some of their, their, those flexible features. And um, hopefully people will be inspired because I think it's a very cool, um, powerful little feature. I think it's really cool. Yes. So I've started um, populating the articles one, but let me just quickly show the difference between them. So you can see that this is um, the beginning of a spreadsheet. Um, So uh, for articles, for we're asked to input the title, the author, the journal, volume, number, year, pages, um, and then there's a notes section. Um, Books, obviously, you don't want journal, so instead you have publisher um, and, uh, you know, the year of publication, um, the ISBN, if that's something you want to keep track of, and theses, you have the institution name. So these are how these are customized to these particular sources. So let's look at articles. So I decided um, to use as an example, um, the article 
with my favorite title of all time, which is The Long Movement as Vampire. This is a really, really uh, key article in the historiography of the civil rights movement. Oh, okay. Um, and it's just a terrific name. It's a, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool name. So um, I want to show everyone how I um, entered all of this information. So while you can just click and type in any... Um, you know what, let me show this by creating a new uh, line. So to create a new entry, you just hit add, um, add a row, and um, you could just type in blah, blah, blah. Yep. But it's actually way easier if you come over here to the, um, the same icons and go to the form view. And here you can just much more easily type in yes. your um, responses. So you can see that pages and month are currently blank. We're going to come back to that when we show our next example. Sorry. So I'm going to go back. I want to enter. So now I'm going to move back to the form. So I want to show you. Um, I'm going to enter actually the article that the vampire article is responding to. So that's the long, oops, sorry about that. Wrong. I was in the wrong, uh, my cursor was in the browser. Um, the long civil rights movement and the political uses of the past. And this is by Jack, oops, Jack Lynn. Dowd Hall. The journal is the Journal of American His Oops, American History. It is volume 91, number four. And the pages are 1233 to 1263. The year, <clears throat> excuse me, is 2005. And um, notes is vampire article responding to this. And I'm just going to grab, let's see, where's the stable URL mm -hmm. from JSTOR and pop that right in. Here we go. And now this should show up in, um, awesome. weird. Okay. Hmm. I wonder. Ada. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you're following along with us, <laughs> you may have seen some foreshadowing because when you typed in the pages, it might not have worked for you. Um, yeah. But that's because before we started recording, we did some editing um, and customization, which maybe is a good thing to go over now um, yeah. so that the pages showed up. Right. So when you go to do this the first time and you try to type in a string of pages like for this one it's um 265 to oops 265 to 288 it might not show up it might disappear yes. and um that's because what it's really wanting is for you to um sorry uh put in the number of pages so like this is 24 pages long. That is not useful to most of us who are <laughs> wanting to go find where exactly in this journal uh, the article is rather than how long it is. So what's great about these spreadsheets is they are customizable. So you can go to this icon, which is a little pencil um, scratch scratching on a page. Um, and you can see if you hover over it, it'll say this is the edit columns icon. Yes. And that will open, ta-da, all of your columns. All Yay. right. So what you will see, and I don't know why this didn't save when I turned it back, um, is that it will come pre-formatted as integer number. And that's why it's looking for a number without a hyphen. So why it wants 24 pages, not the page range. Jesus so what God. you're going to have to do is click on type 
and go down to single line text. Yes. And that will then allow you to um, enter your page spread. Yes. So to save it, you would then click OK. Yes. Now, months is also um, something that I like to, uh, you know, I think should be customized because um, journals don't always um, give a month. And sometimes when they do, they go, you know, they have different ways of showing um, the timing in the year. Right. So it's going to, also going to come as an integer number, you know, but who wants to put in like a one or <laughs> 12, right? right? You really want to have this a single line text. So if you change it to single line text, aha, uh -huh, well, you can see we already came in here <laughs> and we added some drop down options. So I added January through November. We'll add December to show you how to do this. And then also added spring, summer, winter, fall, because lots of journals release quarterly on a seasonal schedule. Yes. So to add a new line, all you have to do is hit add value, type in December, and then um, don't hit this because it will put it in alphabetical order, <laughs> which you want to do. This is not like move it up one, move it down one. What you just want to do is pick it up, drag it, and drop it where you want it to be. So now if we hit OK, and we come here. Um, so the Hall article is from, it's the March issue. So we would come here, we would click, we could scroll down to March. And the Vampire article is Spring. So we would just scroll down and put spring. Terrific. So um, great. Now, you know, we could keep building a list and make this, um, rename this to be articles, uh, civil rights movement, historiography. Um, and uh, have, yeah, be able to, um, you know, export it or how would you do that? Anyway, you could export it, you could print it, whatever you want at the end. Yes. But what you cannot do is view this as a um all, you know, a complete um citation. Let me show an example. I'm just gonna create a formatted note to do this. And I'm going to go over, I'm still in JSTOR on my browser. So if, you know, you want it to look like this, you would have to go and kind of <laughs> copy and paste everything individually and format it. Um, so that's why it's not useful as a reference manager. Yes. Um, but <laughs> if you just want to have an easy way to go, I can never remember which came first. Yes. The, this article or that article. You could say, ah, Hall was in 2005. Vampire was in 2007. And you don't have to go running to your bookshelves to go find the copyright page of the book um, or find, ah, one's in the office and one's at home you already know because you have your home books and your office books listed right. whatever so those are uh I think that's um really what I think is um useful um one last thing like I showed about manipulating the size for um the markdown Cornell notes uh, with these it's not quite as simple as um, being able to expand, you know, the, the whole spread. spreadsheet, but you can um, hover between the columns and change the size. So um, if you wanted your notes section, for example, to show the entire note, you could drag, you know, this as long as you wanted. Yeah, yeah. 
I really do think that this feature is super cool, super powerful, like all things in Devon Think, also really flexible. One mm -hmm. thing I could see maybe someone being interested in is maybe a little to-do list if you wanted to have a little to-do list with one of these. Um, you could, but then, then I start thinking, oh my gosh, but you could also use, you know, labels or maybe you want to use something else like there's lots of ways and Devin think to do lots of so so many different things so sure. the purpose of this uh video I think in all of the stuff we do with Devin think um is to kind is to get you familiar with the feature make you aware that it's there maybe see some new sides of it and then um turn it back to you and say hey how do you think you could use this maybe it's not at all like okay thanks for the update but I'm not really interested or maybe it's ooh you know, I could use this this way or that way. I think for every person that we've spoken to through this work, you, um, everyone uses the features in DevonThink in a slightly different way. So it's really important yeah. to realize how much you can customize. Oh, this is perfect because um, I wanted to highlight the fact that you could make custom and all the different yeah. file, like uh, column types there are for you to select mm -hmm. from. Like there's so, so many options. So you really could start thinking what, how could this work for you and, and what, what do you really need? Um, and how could maybe this feature fill that need for you? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, I have two thoughts in response. One is that, um, you can add tags to these, um, files. Oh, so yep. if you wanted to make a um a book list of all of your books at home you could also tag it with all of the topics of the books mm -hmm. so if you're someone i know people like this they have all of their books on certain topics all organized all together that's me <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you had like all of your civil rights historiography at the office and you had all your suburban suburbanization um, literature at home, um, but, you know, also in both places, 10 other literatures that you can never remember, you could add tags so that you can easily be like, oh, in my home set is my civil rights, my suburbanization, my um, uh, 1970s fiscal crisis collection, <laughs> um, right. and do it that way. Or what you could do, um, is you could, let's say, um, instead of, or let's say you, you had a book list going, you could add a new column here. Right. That's location. Location, yep, we were thinking along the same lines. And you could then go to single line text and you could say. And this is what it looks like when it's not pre-populated. So earlier we showed, showed you a pre-populated version. When when you go there, it will be blank and you can you know hit the plus sign and start typing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and so then if you have um, this column filled out, you could always sort oh. by, you know, and have them all come together. Um, so you can see everything that's in a certain place. Yeah. So lots of ways for you to customize what this looks like, what columns are available, what information is in the columns. Um, yeah, to keep your organized in whatever way you feel like you need organization. I think it's a really mm -hmm. super flexible and really nifty little tool. It's almost like a mini database within your bigger database um, that you can- My favorite really thing cool about Devin Think. Yeah. <laughs> you can have <laughs> like these, you know, uh, what do they say? Like turtles all the way down I don't know I don't know. it just well, there's uh you can have a database inside a database inside oh, a database like device. you can just basically yeah I should never try to use expressions or I'm um, horrible with that like my husband okay. laughs at me I'm yeah. not with them so I no, no judgment here it's all good all good all good all good awesome well hopefully everyone thought that that was a fun little tour of these 
doesn't think features I had fun and hopefully <laughs> people explored some new options and the yeah. wheels are spinning is that proper the proper use of that phrase yes I, I think uh, so <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 this has inspired you maybe to think of a new way that you could organize your data or something you weren't organized in Devon Think that you think you could bring in um, and and use all the search features and the smart groups and all those other tagging and all the other cool things that Devon Think has along as well. So I know that I enjoyed the video. I hope that you did, Abigail, and I hope that everyone watching the video has enjoyed it. Uh, it. Um, if you like these types of videos where we get together, we discuss cool things um, that can help the historian's workflow and using Devon Think, of course. Um, please consider subscribing or hitting the like button on the video. We would love to have you and love to see you in the next video. So until then, I hope you have a great day and, uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.